Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how the new car bubble is finally popping. Before we get into this video, though, as always, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And if you wanna see more content just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post these videos every single day. Let's get into it. So if you don't happen to be familiar with me or my channel, I happen to film car reviews for a bunch of different dealers, over 40 to be exact. And before I did this whole filming thing, I happened to work at a dealership as a car salesman and then as a manager before I quit. And so the sales position obviously gave me a bunch of insight into the car industry. And now that I film for a bunch of dealers, I get one-on-one -on -one conversations with a bunch of different dealers that obviously represent a bunch of different automakers. And so it really gives me a pretty good idea of what is happening in the car market. And it's very specific to each of the automakers. And I'm starting to see a lot of things that are scary for dealers, but they're very good for you as a consumer. So first off, new car inventories are increasing at a rapid, rapid rate. And this is something that I'm seeing in real time as I'm filming for these different dealers. And then I go back home and check the numbers with online sources to see what the national values are. And things are lining up pretty well with what I'm seeing in real time. So every single manufacturer across the board happens to now have inventory at this point, except for Subaru. That's the only brand where you probably won't see a new car on the lot. But even brands like Honda that were struggling a massive amount with getting inventory, they now have inventory. Now, there are certain vehicles within manufacturer lineups that aren't readily available. So like with Honda, you're still not gonna be able to get a Civic Type R. Like that is still gonna be really difficult to get a hold of. But if you go to a Honda dealership, chances are you'll probably see you know, some ridge lines on the ground. You might even see a Civic. You'll see some Accords, um, definitely some passports and pilots with the old body style because you got the new one that people are waiting for. And so there are options to choose from, but still not a massive amount. The inventory still aren't up to what they were at prior to COVID, but they're starting to build back up. And then you have some manufacturers that are on the complete other side of the spectrum where they have so much inventory that they are starting to discount their inventory because they just need to get rid of stuff at this point. Any of like the Stellantis brands, they have too much inventory at this point. So Maserati, Alfa Romeo, Dodge Ram, Jeep, and Chrysler, for example, all of those brands will not only have several vehicles in stock, but they'll have like several colors of all these vehicles and pretty much every single model on the ground. And chances are you'll see some discounts that are just like being advertised like out there like hey please take this vehicle off the lot we've been sitting on it for too long and so that is bringing down the prices on these vehicles so that's the first thing is inventories are rising across the board at this point so on top of the inventories increasing at a rapid rate, we also have the interest rate increase that we've experienced over the last year. And these rates aren't gonna go down anytime soon. It looks like the rates are gonna to continue to go up. So that means affordability is going to continue to go down. And this is doing some interesting things to the new car market. First off, it's just completely ejecting a bunch of people out of the new car market because new car prices are significantly higher today than they were just a year ago. And especially where they were at just a few years ago. I mean, if you look at like 2019, 2020 new car prices, you're looking at the average new car price being around, you know, high $30,000 range. Whereas in today's market, it's closer to $50,000. And so you have all these new cars that are significantly more expensive and the interest rate is significantly higher. And so these payments that people are getting quoted by dealers are so much higher than what they're used to experiencing that it just completely, like I said, ejects them out of the market. But the other thing that is starting to happen is because these payments are so big, people are starting to pull back and go to lower down packages. So I was talking with a Twitter dealer last week and what they told me is that what was a platinum buyer last year, you know, platinum package on a Toyota is now a limited buyer or maybe an XLE buyer on a vehicle. Or if it's like a Toyota Tundra, for example, they are now an SR5 buyer. And so people are jumping down in packages because they can't afford the higher end packages. So you're starting to see these higher end packages stack up on dealer lots. And this is creating an interesting effect 
where the lower down packages are the ones that are starting to get, and I'm not talking about just with Toyota, this is pretty much with every single manufacturer, are, are starting to be the ones that are getting marked up by dealers because those are the ones where there's a ton of demand because you have people that normally purchase more expensive vehicles that are purchasing the less expensive vehicles now, and you have the people that always purchase the less expensive vehicles that are also fighting for those vehicles. And so it's creating this interesting effect where if you're in the market for a more loaded up vehicle, right now, chances are you can actually get a much better deal on it. Whereas if you're wanting something that's a little bit more quote unquote base, then you're going to have to fight to get that vehicle. So with these inventory increases and the decrease in overall affordability, this is shaping up to be a situation that's about to be really good for consumers and, well, it's going to be an absolute nightmare for dealers. And it's starting to look like we might actually have a complete overcorrection, and I will discuss that at the end of the video. But when it comes to dealers, they're going to have to work a lot harder to put car deals together because the used car market is still in complete free fall. And so consumers have like the worst trading values that they've seen in a couple of years. And so there's a lot of sticker shock when it comes to trading values. And then again, the interest rates are super high. So that means that the payments are a lot higher and that goes along with these new car prices being so high. So again, for dealers, it's a nightmare because putting car deals together is super hard, especially car deals that are profitable because just convincing someone to buy a car, even if you're not making any money on the car right now, is super hard for a lot of dealers. And then when it comes to you as a consumer, like I said, this is a situation that's about to be really good because a lot of these manufacturers are still in the mindset that they need to just focus on producing vehicles because we have such a big vehicle shortage. And so there's a pretty big chance that they're going to overcorrect and produce way too many vehicles. And that's what I'm already seeing because I'm seeing these dealer inventories just keeps on stacking up and these vehicles just keep on aging. And so it'll get to a point where they're gonna have to discount these vehicles heavily to convince people to buy them because of how low demand gets. And so that's where we get into a situation where the market's going to potentially like really overcorrect and especially the used car market. With what I'm seeing going on right now, I see a pretty high potential. This isn't for sure, it's not set in stone, but a pretty high potential that the market is going to do like a whole U thing where it's going down, it's going down, and it's gonna hit a bottom and it's gonna go back up because it completely overcorrects because we're gonna get to a situation where there's gonna be so few buyers that prices are gonna have to go so low that eventually people are gonna be like, wait a second, you can buy this for that amount of money. That like it, it'll deals will be so crazy that people will be like, I, I cannot pass that up. And then the market naturally will rebound as more and more people start to jump on. Again, similar to what you see in the stock market when it bottoms out, right? Stock market will bottom out. And then people are like, wait a second, you can buy this stock for this amount of money. Oh, let me go buy a bunch of shares. And then someone else is like, oh, it's starting to go up again. Let me buy a bunch of shares, right? It, Similar situation with the car market, but just generally over a slightly longer time span. And that's something else that I want to mention is the time span with this isn't going to be a matter of days or even a matter of weeks. It'll be a matter of months and potentially a year where you'll see car values at very low levels before they start to go back up and normalize if this situation happens. And like I said, what I'm seeing so far, it's trending towards this overcorrection situation with these automakers being so heavily focused on building vehicles when people aren't buying them like they used to. And then you've got the used car market, which is again, just continuing to fall because people aren't buying those either. So like I've said over the last couple of months, the market is extremely volatile. It's an absolute poop show. So as a buyer, the best recommendation that I can give you is to take a step back, and just be patient and just continue to watch everything that's happening. I understand that it can be kind of nerve wracking looking at this car market and looking at values and going, man, my trade-in is just tanking every single day. And then these retail values are not decreasing. And so if I don't buy now, then my vehicle's about to not be worth anything. And that vehicle's not getting any less expensive. And so the gap between my vehicle and this new vehicle are just only increasing over time again, it's it's not sustainable. There is going to be a point where these retail values are going to absolutely tank because buyer demand, it's already tanked a massive amount, but it's going to continue to tank. Dealers are going to come to their senses and manufacturers are also going to come to their senses. We're going to see a lot more discounts. It's coming. You just have to be patient. That's going to sum things up with today's video. I'll see you.